1989, John Deere 285 oil change. You want to take her out for a quick little spin just to get the oil warmed up some and open up the hood. Can't get the hood up all the way. I have to use that bungee cord because we still have our snow thrower on. But this is good enough to get in here. This is the area that you just need to be able to reach. This is the oil filter. This is the dipstick and that is the drain plug. All right, so the process is pretty straightforward. We'll just uh, open the open the dipstick, just get it open like that so it'll drain a little quicker. You can leave it there. And then we'll open this drain plug. That drain plug is a 13 16 or a 21 millimeter will work on there as well. Or if you haven't got either of those, you could, of course, just use a crescent wrench or even anything like, um, you know, any kind of pliers like these water pump style pliers or the any kind of channel lock that has that kind of shape there the v-shape just to grab on that so you don't you don't strip it so look for a funnel that you'll be able to kind of wedge under here because you can see it's going to want to kind of fly out better yet i'll show you what i use i have this here this is just a hose that i pulled off of some random car at the junkyard and it'll fit right there. So when I open that up and the oil's gonna squirt this way, it won't get all over the pedal here. So here we go, we'll get this opened up. I'm gonna use my 21, um, my 21 millimeter, because it fits on there real nice. And just go counterclockwise as usual. You can see it's not very tight. And once we pull that out, the oil's gonna wanna, like I mentioned, kinda shoot. So I'm just gonna go like this to catch it as best I can. There we go. Okay, you so see I swapped out to that funnel there and that's just barely trickling so we'll let that keep draining. Now to the oil filter. So you want to get in here and kind of clean this up with all the dust and debris from grass and all of that. And then to remove this you can use um, you can use the um, 64 millimeter 14 flute. This is actually the same it's actually the same filter as um, on a, several Toyotas, and we have a RAV4 and a Matrix, and this is the um, exact filter for that. If you don't have this, you might just try to grab it and turn it. It might not be on there too tight. Or oh, of course, there's enough room in there to just use a regular oil filter wrench to get on here. I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the filter wrench. So just using the filter wrench with um, with a ratchet. Just to make it easier. And you're just gonna go counterclockwise. Oh, that's not even, that one isn't even on there that tight. So probably do that by hand. Before you take that filter off all the way, you might wanna grab something to catch the oil. I'm just gonna use this, this here, this is from, you know, the soda bottle. And I'm gonna slip it under, slip it underneath. So that when I turn it off, most of the oil will end up in here instead of just kind of going everywhere. Okay. Okay. Let that drain a little bit. That's how much oil came out with the oil filter there, so uh, just be advised you're gonna have to catch that. Okay, there you can see that's almost, that's just dripping down there, so you can grab your drain plug. Now the drain plug does have a aluminum gasket on there, you can see. You don't have to replace that. There's, um, you're not crushing it. You're not putting this on there very tight at all when you put it back on. You'll notice when you take it off, it doesn't need to be very tight in order to, uh, to seal it and you're just going to get it on there enough to seal it. Get on there snug but not crazy tight and then if it leaks just tighten it up a little bit more. Grab my wrench just tighten it up a bit. I'm sure that's fine. Okay now for you for the filter just get in here and clean this surface here. Just want to wipe it down and get it clean. Don't knock anything in there like that. Okay, when it comes to picking your replacement filter, of course you can always use this John Deere. This is AM107423. 
this might be difficult to to get in your area though we have a really good john deere dealer in town so it's not a problem for us but even still i'm going to actually use this napa they had the napa's on sale for three bucks and so this is a napa silver um uh, part number on that is three one three nine four this is also the same size as um toyota filters um, like i said for the rav4 and the uh matrix lots of lots of different applications i'm gonna go with this napa silver and then i just wrote on there the hours and the date it's almost may and this uh this 285 has uh 1079 hours then for the oil filter you just want to take some clean engine oil and just go around the gasket just like that and then you're going to put this on here and once you feel it touch the surface so once you get that first resistance you're going to go between half a turn and three quarters of a turn no half a turn and uh, two thirds of a turn so right there is where it's catching it so there's the reference mark I can use so half a turn would be right there it's starting to tighten up some then just go a little bit further you just want to go between half and two-thirds somewhere around there you want it to be snug but not crazy tight picking your replacement oil you're gonna to want to see what kind of uh, climate you live in we use 10w30 because we're usually operating and sometimes it's below four degrees here if the snowblower is on but we'll let it warm up a little bit and it's usually not too too hot here but if you're operating let's say during the summertime you might want to use the SAE 30 if you're in a hotter area and as you can see over here if you're in a real cold area you're gonna want to move down to a 5w30 so most people are going to want to use 10w30 and the manual recommends John Deere plus four you can also use other oils that meet API service classification SF or SE. This is what we use. It's Turf Guard from John Deere SN slash GF5. And we use 10W30. We've been using this for many, many years and have never had any problems. This is what we go with. We can get it for cheap at our local John Deere. It's only about $3.50 a quart. Refer to the manual that I just showed to pick the uh, engine oil that would be appropriate for your case. Whatever you end up getting, you want to get two quarts. Okay, now we can go ahead and add the oil. Take a little dipstick out here. And that's where we're going to refill through. So just get a funnel. Don't want to pour too quickly because it might back up some. And watch it carefully so it doesn't start to back up and um, overflow the funnel. The uh, capacity for the 285 is 1.9 liters, but obviously you're not going to get all of that out. So, so we'll start with this and then uh, check the level. The level will be a little bit high because it hasn't primed that oil filter yet. And then we'll run it for a couple minutes and check it again. Okay, now to check the level on the 285, you can see on this dipstick there is a add. There you can see add at the end and full and then that hash mark there. You want it you want the oil level to be between the add and full, so you want to win those hash marks, but the the thing with this is when you put it in, you don't want to screw it on. You just want to let it set like that. And then you pull it out and you look at your level. There you can see that it is between add and full right there. Okay, you can see it's like right in between. But watch what happens if I uh, if I put it back in and I screw it all the way down, you can get a false reading. So if I put it back in and I screw it all the way down, and then I take it out, you can see what it will say. Now it shows all the way up to full, see that? See that, and we haven't uh, we haven't added any oil. So the reason that's important to 
to do it the right way is remember right now we haven't even started the engine so we haven't primed the oil filter so this is going to draw down the oil level so if you're thinking that you have a that you're full, you're, you're, you're not there. And you're gonna get a false reading if you turn it all the way down like that. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more and then we'll start it up. We're, we're right at full, you can see there, right at full. So we'll have to add a little bit more um, after that oil filter primes. But for now, we can put this back on and tighten it up and then go ahead and start the engine and get that filter primed. All right, you got the oil filter back in place and snug, the dipstick back in place and tight, and of course the drain plug nice and tight on there. And we'll go ahead and start it up and then let it run for a couple minutes. And now after she's set for a little couple minutes, so run a couple minutes and then let her sit for a couple minutes, you'll pull the dipstick out, clean it, and then Put it back in, just sitting on the threads, sitting on the top like that to get your good read, just like that. And let's see where it is. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a hair. It's just a hair below full, so I'll leave it there. You just want to make sure it's between the add and full lines on those uh, hash marks there. Okay, so we can put this back in and just check, check for leaks, get this on here snug. Check the drain plug, is it leaking? It's not leaking. Check the oil filter, it's not leaking. And so that's it. That's all the steps for the oil change. The only other thing I'll mention, just because it's right back here, this is the coolant reservoir. You want to have the coolant between the top mark, which is H for high, and the bottom mark, which is L for low. I just added a little bit of coolant in here to get it up to the low. You want it at low when the engine's cool and no higher than high when the engine is warm, since the coolant's gonna expand if you're checking the coolant level when the engine is warm. And to add coolant, you just uh, you just unscrew this cap here. It can be a little bit tight, and a little hard to reach in there, but you just unscrew that. There it goes. Just unscrew that. It just takes regular green ethylene glycol coolant. So I hope this video was helpful for you on uh, your oil change, and good luck with your repair.